is walk down to that lower ledge. That's the one, hold him. For the very first time in lateral line history, the last time the boys went fishing, they never had any fresh fish to eat while they were on their fishing mission. And we never took anything home to eat either. So this time around, even more than normal, we are here to catch something to eat, to fill our bellies with a fresh feed of fish that we have caught ourselves. And to make it as easy as possible, we're gonna be spending the next couple of days in our favorite part of the realm, trying to do just that. We are staying close as to home on this one and we are even closer to the truck. The walk this time around was, is non-existent. <laughs> and everything started off pretty good. Milan's very first cast, he was into a fish. That fish being, of course, the mighty kawaii, and then that was set to purpose as a live bait. And then from there, it was all about catching a few more kawaii, just in case nothing else turned up, to take back to eat for dinner tonight. Once again, my controller for the drone is saying, that I'm not logged into the account. So once again, I can't fly the drone more than 50 meters away or more than 20 meters high, which if I'm honest is really frustrating. But yeah, anyway, long story short, Kawai, the mighty Kawai has been caught. The boys have found themselves somewhere beautiful and out of the wind to cook up said kawaii and we are very soon going to be eating the mighty kawaii for dinner and that has a big smile on my face because that is more than we achieved last time around and to make up for the lack of fishing greatness i've got a story for you milan and alex went fishing the other day and the idea was to catch Alex, her very first land-based kingfish. Which is something that I would have loved to have filmed myself, but we are right now in the peak of the roar and I want to spend as much time as I possibly can in the trees trying to catch up with a big, mature fellow buck. So, Milan filmed it and I am going to leave you with that story of Alex catching her very first kingfish off the rocks. And once you have seen that, it'll be back here for dinner and then bed. And then we're up early tomorrow to see if we can catch something to take home. This morning, Alex and I jumped up super early, decided to come up the Coromandel. Now she hasn't caught a land-based kingfish before. We had a wicked weather window, so we decided to give it a go. And the coast road wasn't in the best shape, but we got here in one piece. We managed to walk in, got down onto the ledge, Alex set up a gear, we got all the burly pumping, got a car wire, got the live bait rig sorted, and no sooner we got that livey in the water, this happened. That kingfish inhaled that live bait right next to the rocks. Not even five seconds, and a kingfish ate. Alex is doing a great job so far. Oh, a little bit of weed down there. Pull him through. Oh, nice. That fish just came up as soon as we put the live in the water. Now he's gonna dive, so just get your good footing. Get good footing, Alex. He's gonna splash around there for a bit. Hold him, that's the one. That's the one. Pull him, darling. Oh, -ho, look at the size of that. Okay, wait there, we're gonna go down and grab him. You've already got wet shoes. So what I want you to do is walk down to that lower ledge. That's the one, hold him. Grab his tail, that's the one. Now you got him. <sighs> How was that? That was good. Say something awesome. It happened a bit fast. Happened a bit fast. <laughs> Okay, pop them in.
How's it feel you call your first land-based kingfish? Pretty excited. Do you think you deserve lunch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bait? Yep. Nothing else around for the rest of the afternoon. We've fished for three or four hours. It's been really quiet. Just gonna pack it up and enjoy the trip home. See if there's anything fishable down the coast. But what a well worth morning getting up and going for a fish. That's what it's all about. We've had three trips chasing kings now. We haven't caught anything. And then today we got a beautiful fish and Alex got her first land-based kingfish. She's pretty excited about it. And now it's time to pack it up and do the big walk home. BJ was for breakfast. Yeah. Another fishing day has begun, and it has begun much like every single other fishing day. Although the boys did want to find themselves a different spot today. We've fished this piece of coast a bunch of times, but yeah, just enjoy fishing new rocks and new spots, even though it's the same area, but this piece of coast is pretty rugged and the spots that you can get to are pretty limited. So we have found ourselves back at a spot that we've already fished, but it is a good spot. We did well, well, when I say we did well, we've seen a big fish, we didn't catch it, but seeing a big fish and being in the right place at the right time is about as good as it gets sometimes, right? So if we're in the right place at the right time today, then things could be really, really cool. Today I do have a secret weapon for Milan to catch snapper. And that secret weapon is koi carp. Koi carp are a fish here in New Zealand that is a pest and they are plaguing our fresh waterways and lakes and everything else. So I went and did a little bit of conservation work, if you want to call it that, after getting an invite from a good man by the name of Andrew. And Mr. Andrew Cottle took me out in his crazy little boat. Well, I shouldn't say crazy little boat. It was a, um, a boat that is perfectly designed for the desired mission. And yeah, he took me up into a big lake, chucked a bow and arrow in my hand, which was awesome. I've always wanted to do koi carp bow fishing and just never done it. So when Andrew gave me the opportunity, I was real keen to go do it. So yeah, I got to rock around on the lake with him for the day and uh, try to find some koi carp. And we managed to do that. There are a lot of them. They just seem to be everywhere. Getting in bow range of one and making an effective shot was a different story, but considering it was the first time that I'd ever done it and I managed to get two or three, I was pretty happy. Oh, two for two! <laughs> <laughs> so to Andrew, my man, my brother, thank you very, very much. I really enjoyed that, bro. And if these koi carp are as good a snapper bait as what I am told, then I'd love to come and do that with you again and fill the freezer and make a heap of cup baits and salted baits and whatever else we can do with those things to um, be more effective snapper fishermen. And in the process, we will be helping out the environment. It's a win-win. So yeah, anyway, on the rocks. Weather's not that desirable, but the fishing's gonna be awesome because we got koi carp. Bring it on. I can't see in the water, it's so dirty. Well, while I was rambling on, Milan's already got a live bait. So we're in. We're into it. Milan's excited, eh, Milan? Yep, I'm what are excited. You gonna... I got the perfect dreamy little live bait. Got a nice little shower of rain just down to come across the hill so Nathan can go, oh, it's going to rain. What are you on about? Why are you taking me fishing when it's raining? But I got a live bait. And just like that, the boys are fishing. Excuse me, Milan, where's your live bait? Live and weed is what my uh, <laughs> fishing uh, trip is all about. Live baits and weed. Did he reef you as well? You got rock damage. Tiny, tiny bit. 
Milan's back to car wipe fishing. Oh, look at that. Oh, Missy Tickle, bro. <laughs> it's not going to take long to get one, is it? <laughs> no, you got to get the small ones, bro. Why do you want the small ones, man? Wash your mouth out, bro. Just massive I can't believe Milan Radisnitchel just said he wants the small live bait. What are you talking about, man? That's two, two zip. <laughs> Why is it so much fun teasing your mates? It shouldn't be this much fun. Come on, man. Third time's a charm, man. Oh, he ate it. Oh, you got him. No, you haven't. That's three zip, man. <laughs> Can you turn up and I haven't got a live bait? Milan zero, three to the kawaii. Oh, 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 oh. Right, he's got one. Solid hookup. Kawaii coming up. It's a little one like you wanted to, Milan. Can't believe you said that. Shock and disbelief that you wanted to get a little live bait. I want a live bait, a fish doesn't have to think about to eat. Just consume it. Because there's big fish around with all those car wire around, so. Inhale. We're fishing for the big one once Go more. You just lose another live bait. I'm just diving in the weeds. I need a longer, <laughs> I need to shorten my trace. I've got a long trace because it's drifting off the rocks, but the water's too shallow. Oh man. It's raining, Milan. Enough to get my camera covered in crap. Live bait number three. Milan's just shortened his trace, so hopefully that one will stay out of the weed. Get him up to the surface, Milan. Big tank boat. We got a fish around. I'm trying to hide from the rain. Under the umbrella and film, we've got down to one end. Milan just lost another live bait. And my um, umbrella just broke under the strain. <laughs> oh, Eagle Ray. That one is live bait number four. Hopefully I can keep him out of the way. Mate, what's gonna happen if you hook a kingfish, man? Can't keep a carlo on the hook, how are you gonna keep a kingy on the hook? Do a big scale the first day. Eh? Big scales, right, isn't it? Huge scale. Koi carp baits in the water, testing it on the little snappers. You got one, Milan? Snapper on koi carp. Mission complete. <laughs> we want him to go home. How come you pick the wild days to go fishing? <laughs> You're the man who's to pick the days to go fishing. Well, snapper eat koi carp. You only need a big one. Or a big thingy. Well, I think that might be the end of the rain. And that's a good thing because it's the end of my umbrella. A new offering. Things are a little bit on the slow side, but hopes are extremely high. We've seen two kingfish, one of which we only just got a glimpse of it, couldn't film it, but it was a reasonable fish. The one that Milan had on his live bait was a reasonable fish, and low tide is only like, well, less than an hour away now. So at low tide, in the past, a number of times we've had kingfish action. So yeah, hoping for that. And while I was mucking around before, setting up for a time lapse, Milan managed to catch a snapper to take home so hopefully there'll be a little bit more of that to come as well 
and the boys can go home with some fresh fish because right now we are feeling withdrawal symptoms from eating fresh fish. So yeah, we'll catch a kingfish today too. I think he's in real trouble because once again, the boys haven't eaten a lot of fresh fish lately and uh, it might be time. But yeah, anyway, low tide is fast approaching and so is a visit from a massive kingfish. And I can't wait. On the big rod. Whoa! What did you hook? Big snapper. You reckon? Yeah. Mainland's hooked the big snapper fish. I was sitting on the rock and all I heard was run, run. You mean swim, swim, right? Either a kingfish or a shark, right? Hang on a minute, you just said it was a big snapper. Now it's either a kingfish or a shark. It's a kingfish, I think. It's got good tail, it's got good tail beats. Yep. On that big long rod. <laughs> I thought Scotty said you weren't allowed to catch fish off the rocks with that rod. It's a snapper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, Scotty, I can't control the man, man. He's a bit crazy sometimes. Using surf casting rods, rock fishing and all that. That ain't no snapper, bro. What's going to happen here? I think Mingland might be in a spot of bother. <laughs> Meaning he's about to get reefed. That looks like it's got good weight too. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Slammed the line into the rock. <laughs> Milan! <laughs> I can taste kingfish already. I got over there and... <laughs> the line hit the rock, oh, eh? I got over there and he lunged at the same time. Oh, and it whacked into the rock. Got it. That was a big fish. All day fishing. We get our opportunity and I let the damn thing go. Oh. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, son. <laughs> Normally at times like these, I'm just <laughs> into me and giving them grief, but I wanted that one. Could already taste them. He was already in my belly. Dude! What are you doing, man? I have no idea. <laughs> that was dumb. That's what happens when you slam your rod into the rocks, bro. Snap! <laughs> it was a good whoosh, too, eh? He just went at the same time as I went. Just didn't judge it right. I got some good news and I got some bad news. Bad news is that at some point today, some water's got into my audio gear and destroyed the audio on some vital clips. Live bait eaten. Live bait hit. Oh, that one's going hardcore. <laughs> got good the good news is that the vital clips that got destroyed was when Milan hooked into Fort and landed a beautiful kingfish. So this one couldn't have played out any more perfectly, I reckon. The boys came away on this mission with the sole goal to be eating fresh fish in the wide open spaces, which isn't anything unusual, but we hadn't eaten any fresh fish in like a month, so <laughs> that is just criminal when you make fishing content, right? So yeah, we filled our bellies with fresh fish last night, and now Milan has landed a beautiful kingfish to take home and we are just smiling from ear to ear. We're about to pack up so that we can do this fish as much justice as we can and by that I mean getting it filleted, getting it on ice and keeping it in the prime condition so that it can be enjoyed. So yeah, that is the end of this one. The boys are about to pack up and head home. 
Choo Choo, my brothers and sisters. Thank you all so very, very much for watching The Lateral Line. We absolutely love what we do, and with you guys watching it, it means that we get to do it more. And not only that, for me, it makes it more enjoyable. I enjoy making the lateral line more so than I enjoy the fishing these days. And if nobody was watching it, it definitely wouldn't be as much fun as it is. So, um, yeah, cheer cheer. It's awesome. See you all again very, very soon. What an education building your own house has been. I always used to look at people and go, why is it stressful? Why you're building your dream house? How fun is this? How cool is this? But when you actually get into it and you do it yourself, you learn that there's so many things going on and so much going on and so many decisions to be made that it does become stressful. It's the best thing you've ever done and it's the most incredible feeling. And I think once I'm living in the house, I think it's gonna be wonderful. But wow, what a journey it has been. And I'm so happy I've had people like Andre on board that have been able to manage and give me the information to help me make the right decisions all the way through. With the floor down, it's time to get on to the really cool stuff. And that's lining the walls. I have spent weeks and weeks and weeks getting timber ready so I can get it ready for Andre to stick it on the wall. I thought it was ready, but it's nowhere near ready. All it is is planed or sanded. Next, Andre had to run string lines down them. Then he had to edge the boards. Then he had to put them through the bench saw. Then he had to get the sander and put an arras on them. Then he had to cut them to length. The amount of work that is required to put one board on the wall is blowing my mind. But it's taken a long time to build this house. And I think when we get to the end, the reward is gonna be there. Andre has said to me over and over, if you jibbed the house, it would have been finished. But you wanted something different. You wanted something for you. And you've achieved that. You've got something which is incredible. So go outside, get back on the planer and planer heat more boards, because we need a heat more boards to finish this house. The Lateral Line is proudly brought to you by Violet Organic Foods.